Okay, uh, I'm done with the scene. I just basically uh, renamed the other assembly to reflect the side that it's on, which is the left side. I also took care of that uh, little offset that we had on the right clavicle reader um, group. A little typo there. Um, it was just a matter of deleting the um, the uh, parent, the dynamic parent, um, rematching my my group locator onto the uh, the clavicle, re-rotating it in the correct direction, and reapplying the dynamic parent um, to the spine joint, and everything now is correctly. I also zeroed them out just to uh, not have weird values in there. And I renamed the assembly. It says assembly right clavicle reader. Same thing for the left side. Okay, so now we're ready to uh, work with them. So let's see what we have. I'm going to close up to this area of the character. And as you can see, our clavicle has some keyframes right here. So let's see what it's doing. It's going up, then it's going down. Okay, then it's going to the front, and then it's going to the back. So let's see what values we get from our assembly as the clavicle is performing these motions. Let's check out our channels. And here I'm going to take some notes just because I want to see which values I'm going to be using um, depending on which direction the clavicle is rotating because I know I'm going to get values from different parts. So let's go to the frame where the clavicle is all the way up, which is right here. So we're getting a north value that is positive and a south value that is negative. So when the clavicle goes up, north is positive and south is negative. The rest stays zeroed, okay? As you can see, as it goes down, I'm not going to worry about the actual values yet, but uh, we'll look into that later. So when the clavicle is down, we get the opposite. We get north is negative, south is positive. Okay? Let's now see what happens when it goes forward. So when it's forward, we get an east value positive and a west value negative. And when it goes back, uh, we get the opposite. Backwards is east goes negative and west goes positive. Okay, so um, I'm going to deal with the uh, with the positive numbers, which because those are telling me uh, in which way the um, the clavicle is rotating, and uh, we'll see how that blends into into um, other possible poses. So we have when the clavicle goes up, I need to use north. When the clavicle goes down, I need to use south. When it goes forward, I use east. And when it's backwards, I use west. So that's going to be a pretty easy. So let's collapse these guys. And I need to use this channel, for example, when the clavicle is backwards. So we're going to wire these values to our locators over here. Let's go find them again. To this guy, the pectoral mover. That's the one that we are going to be driving. This guy is the one that is going to be moving all over the place. And of course, he's going to take with him the deformer later on. Um, because I believe it's not yet, yeah, it's not yet dynamically parented to anything. So these two guys are going to be dynamically parented to that. So let's start. The parent is just there for reference, so that these values will be zeroed, okay? Because uh, that's what we're going to be working with. So let's start when the clavicle goes up, what should happen with this guy? Well, she, he should go up, okay? That's that's the first movement we're going to put into him. 
he should go up and maybe back a little bit. So let's see which axes those are. Those are Y and Z. So what we're going to do is we're not going to work with these channels. We're going to add additional channels to our locator. Okay. So let's add a position and we're going to rename this new position channel to uh, position uh, and we're going to call it driven clavicle up. Okay, so these are the uh, the channels that we're going to work with. So let's select these and bring them into the schematic. So that brings the locator and these three position channels. So let's see what we are going to do. Uh, the first thing is the values that I'm getting for my um, assembly are pretty small. So it's very likely I'm going to have to multiply them by some factor to see some realistic movement over there. Okay, so let's see. Let's go to the frame where the clavicle is up, which is that one. And let's see our north channel, uh, which is the, um, the x value. So we're going to wire that into this guy's y value. Let's see what happens. Yep. He moved up a little bit, as you can see. So now we have movement there. Which is great. I don't know yet if that's as far as I want to take it or more. I'll be able to know that when I've actually painted the weights for this area and see if it's too far or not. But that's okay. So for now, I just want to see this guy go up, um, maybe a little bit more, in which case we're going to add a multiply node. And we're going to multiply this by 1.2. Let's leave it at 1 for now, actually. There you go. And we, we said we wanted to move it back also a little bit. So we're going to take this same value and plug it into the z-axis. But this guy we're going to multiply by, uh, well, in theory, you could say minus 1. But I don't want it to move back as much as it's moving up. So we're going to multiply it by minus 0.5, let's say. And that still might be a little bit too too much. Let's say 0.25. Actually, minus 0 0.2. That, that would be enough. And as you can see, as the clavicle raises, this guy moves up and back a little bit. Okay. The problem is he's also moving down as the clavicle goes down, which so far looks okay. It's moving down and forward a tiny bit. So we're going to decide later on if we want to keep that motion or not. Again, when we have painted our deformations, that might actually save us from having to create another channel to move the clavicle down. Um, if, the firm, if the movement is not correct for when the clavicle goes down, then what we need to do is limit these guys to only take values when the value coming out of this channel is positive. Right now, they're working regardless of if it's positive or negative. That's why it's moving when the clavicle goes down. So if we add another conditional to this and we say only if the value is positive, then you will see only movement for that part of the clavicle motion. For now, I'm going to leave it like that. And let's now test for uh, front and back. So let's go to a frame where the clavicle is all the way to the front, which is right there. Okay. And what I would see, I want to see there is take this guy and move it forward and inwards a bit. Okay. So let's do that. Let's create another position channel. And this guy is going to be 
I'm going to call him also driven clavicle forward. Okay. Let's take these channels, add them to the schematic. And in this case, uh, forward comes from, let's see which channel, east valley positive. So let's take a, a, the east um, x channel and let's wire it to the positive z channel on the locator. So he moves forward a bit. And I might want to see more movement there. So let's another, let's add another multiply node in there. And this guy is going to be multiplied by 1.5 so that the muscle moves forward. Okay. And I want him to move inwards, which is on the x axis too. And that just looks about right. Again, we'll decide later. Okay. And when the clavicle goes back, he moves backwards and outward, which is actually what I would like to see. So right now the setup looks uh, not so far from working properly. Okay. That's great. The only thing that is uh, we still need to do is to take the parent of, uh, of this rig and uh, let's see the, yeah him we're gonna again dynamically parent him to uh, the appropriate joint which would be in this case let's see whom we said we wanted to use this guy right here so that means this joint right over there okay again I believe that's spine 05 yeah, so let's take this parent. Am I grabbing the parent? Yeah, and spine zero five. Go to setup and add it as a dynamic parent. We can leave setup, and now the rig should follow the character's torso. There it is. Perfect. And the only thing left is to take our uh, deforming joint, well, the deformer in this case, and dynamically parent it to the locator that is moving. Okay. And let's see that once more. Everything should move properly. Perfect. There you go. We have our little rig working. Okay. Now it's time to bring this guy into the deformation system. Um, before I do that, we obviously have to rig the other side of the character, but I think you already know how to do that. So uh, I'm going to pause the video, just do it for you and show you the end result. Uh, as soon as I'm done. So just give me a couple of minutes. Okay, I'm done rigging the other side of the character. Let me show you. Clavicle down, clavicle up. You can see down here the locator moving. Okay. And clavicle forward and backwards. All right. So uh, let me show you how I did this. It's pretty much exactly the same rig, uh, of course, using the appropriate channels on this side. The only difference is uh, for this side of the character, I had to multiply one of the values by minus one because the locator needed to move in the uh, opposite direction than the locator on this side was moving. In, the, in this case, for the x axis, um, when the clavicle is moving forward. So I just multiply that by minus one and that gave me the opposite direction. The rest of the rig is identical. So that pretty much does it. This concludes the rigging of the uh, pectoral muscles. So the only thing that would be still needed would be to actually get these guys to deform 
the, um, the mesh of the character, which is what we're going to be looking at in the next video. Okay, now that our character is all set with its uh, moving pectoral joints, which are going to simulate sort of muscle movement, uh, let's get them to deform the mesh. So we're going to have to do this in the schematic view. So let's go back to our schematic and let's go to, I guess we'll do this in the spine rig because well, all the, all the stuff related to the spine is already here, so let's do it right here. So we're going to need a few things. In this case, we need our um, joint, the one that is uh, the locator that is deforming the mesh. Well, not yet, but it will. So let's get that one into the schematic. And we can height the dynamic parent. We just need this guy. So all we're going to do is add uh, general influence to the mesh. And this is the this is going to be the uh, the forming locator, okay? So let's get our mesh in here, and we're going to add a uh, general influence onto it, okay? Now before we plug in the uh, the locator, and actually let's unplug this guy for now, we are going to create a couple of new weight maps on our our mesh. So let's go to the normalizing folder. Uh, actually, no, we just need to go to the lists tab. We're going to work with this later. Let's uh, bring that up. And let's go to I'll bring this down. Let's go to weight maps. Okay, so we have here all of the weight maps currently assigned to our mesh. So we're going to create a couple new ones. Uh, we're going to call this guy weight map R pectoral and it's a weight map with no initial value. We're going to leave it empty and we're going to create another one for the left side. Okay, now that these two weight maps are part of the mesh, we can use them with this general influence. And let's make sure we're in setup mode when we set everything up. So let's connect again our geometry into the general influence. And let's call this guy general influence our pectoral. And we can duplicate that. I also duplicated the mesh, which we don't need. So let's have this one be for the left side. Okay, there we are. And now we need to point them at the correct weight map. So let's take this one for example. I'm going to say type weight map and let's select from the list our weight, our pectoral weight map, okay, which is currently empty. That's totally fine. And let's do the same for the other one, weight map. And this one is going to be with the left weight map, since it's the left general influence. And now all we need to do is bring in the uh, the correct locators for both to use. So we have one. Let's bring in our other locator for the other side. And now we just need to wire things together. So this guy is going to be the effector for the right side. This guy is going to be the effector for the left side. Okay, and we're pretty much done. That's all you have to do. Of course, at this point, nothing is happening yet because we have no weights assigned for these guys yet, which is something we're going to solve in a second. So now that the setup is done, we have these two weight maps over here, right? So let's go ahead and select uh, one of them. Let's go to our lists. Let's uh, I'll get out of setup mode. Now that we're done, select the mesh. And let's select one of our weight maps. Let's start with the right side over here. Okay, so there's nothing yet. So all I'm going to do is go to our weighting tab and let's paint a little bit of weight on 
uh, this area mainly for our character. Let's turn up life deformers to make things a little bit speedier. Actually, that was too much right there. Let's just paint a little bit here, a little bit there. We can tweak this later on. I just want to see some movement. Okay, let's drop the tool and let's see what's happening. Right now, nothing is happening. Let's try that again. Ah, uh, there it is. As you can see, we have now movement on our pectoral area. Now the problem with this is that, you see, we're getting a really odd thing happening right there when the entire body moves. And basically we're just getting a double transform. So fortunately we know what to do with those. The reason is we have here our general influences and they're acting on top of the normalized um, bind folder. So all we need to do is bring those in into the normalized folder body bind. Okay, let's just drag and drop over there these. And now as you can see, it's working properly. So that's pretty much it. We're done. <laughs> that's all you have to do. Of course, we still have to paint the other side, but now you know how to mirror uh, weight maps. So we don't really have to uh, worry too much about that. You can see the pectorals are moving the body properly. And as he moves his clavicle, that part of the mesh deforms, which is quite nice. Of course, uh, that still needs more tweaking so you can just go to a pose where the clavicle is in a given uh, yeah pose basically and you can just continue painting uh, some additional weights for example if you want to add a little bit of uh, movement somewhere else you can do that and you're done that's pretty much it that's how what you need to do to uh, add more stuff to a bind. And now, because um, these deformers are part of the hierarchy of the character of the deforming joints, let's actually take a look at that. Let's hide everything except the deformation skeleton. You can see that our pec joints are right there our locators because they're part of this hierarchy if you ever need to unbind the mesh and rebind it uh, these new items will be taken into account by the bind and assign some um, some uh, default weight so uh, that makes them part of the system which is a big time saver so that's all you need to do to get uh, new joints onto a skin system once the bind has been done so I'm gonna review that very quickly you need you need the joint that you're going to be using to deform the mesh. You're going to need a general influence that is being driven by that joint. And uh, of course, it, it uses the mesh as its geometry. And you, you need to place these general influences inside of the normalized folder that was created by the bind tool. Okay, there they are. So that pretty much completes... Uh, the deformations for our ace character and we can move on on to something else okay so uh, no there's still a couple of things we need to do to be able to claim we're done with the deformations for the character so let's get on to those and the first one is I want to show you how to fake uh, skin sliding effects and no moto does not have a muscle system or anything else that is designed to do skin sliding or um, the effect of something sliding under the skin of the character. But I found a way of sort of simulating this or faking it a little bit so you can add a little bit more life to your character rigs. So before we actually do anything on the character, we have to work out the little prototype again. 
so we can do our tests on it and see how well it works. So I'm going to show you um, the approach I use at faking some skin sliding on on well on pretty much anything. This can be used for different purposes, but we're going to use it on our character. But uh, again. This is just simulating something moving under a surface. Um, so I'm using this little plane to test my um, my approach on. Uh, so it's, we're going to keep it again very simple. You have to be able to keep things simple so you can pinpoint problematic areas. And I've subdivided it just enough so that we can see some deformations on it. So what do we do with it? Well, um, we're going to do the following. Let's going to start off. Well, we're going to start off with just a basic uh, deformation on our mesh. So I'm going to just add this locator to the scene, move it up a little bit. And I'm just going to add a general influence to my mesh. So there it is. And we're going to use uh, our locator as the uh, effector for the for the general influence so what happens is the entire surface moves up okay and if I move my locator the surface is following so what I want to do is localize this effect to only a certain part of the surface so that would be the area um, where you would want to see this kind of bone movement or muscle movement happening well, the deformations in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to limit the effect of of this transformation of this movement to a part of my mesh using a weight map. So let's go to my lists tab, select the mesh and add a new weight map. And we're going to call it, uh, I don't know, muscle for now. It's not really going to be a muscle, but uh, you're going to see what's going on, what's going to happen next. So let's go to our weighting tab and I'm going to paint some weights on this guy. So let's see, let's paint some weight here and then I reduce this and some weight here and then reduce it even more and some weight here. Okay, just to give it like a little bit of decay right there. And now that my weight map is painted, I can go to my um, transforms properties. And instead of affecting the entire mesh, I'm going to limit the uh, effect of this deformation to a weight map. I'm going to select my muscle weight map. And what you get is this. Okay, let's smooth that out a little bit. So let's uh, make sure our weight map is selected. And let's do a smooth selected operation a few times. There you go. That looks better. So now I can take my locator and move it around and the movement is limited to only that part of the mesh, right? So that's cool. But it doesn't look like it's sliding at all. I mean, if it looks like the vertices are pretty much stuck to my locator and they're following it and uh, it's just a regular deformation. So how do I get to do the sliding effect? Well, that actually happens uh, by using a falloff. So let me show you how that's going to work. Let's go to the formers, add a capsule falloff, and let's bring it into the schematic. Okay. So right now he's attached to uh, to the mesh. It's nothing happening. Let's break that connection. And what we're going to do is instead we're going to connect it to um, our transform influence, okay? And uh, well, looks kind of funny. So there's a few things we need to change on this fall off for it to work correctly. Like right now, seems like nothing is happening. Let's look at the uh, properties for the fall off. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, let's, let's make it longer, a little bit longer like that. And uh, let's change the radiuses on it. So you can see it starts to become a little bit better in terms of the deformation. But still, I'm moving it 
and nothing is happening. Well, the reason is um, the deformation is not being recalculated because you have to turn off use setup. Otherwise, only the setup state of the uh, falloff is used. But now, this is the interesting part. Now you can start to see more the effect that we are after. Okay, so I can move my fall off. And you can see it sort of sliding underneath the surface. But this sliding is still limited to the area that we painted on because of our weight map. So I can just move out of it and nothing happens. So this is going to be the approach we're going to be using. And uh, to tweak how the deformation happens, you can you can play around with some of the uh, parameters on the on the fall off object itself. But this is this is what we want. Okay, we can actually rotate it to give the deformation a different shape. So now it looks like a protruding object underneath the skin, as you can see, and that's going to be our bone moving around the character. So that's exactly how we're going to rig it onto the mesh of the character. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple setup, uh, but it does a nice job of conveying some sort of uh, movement under the skin of the character. Of course, uh, we're not going to really try to do some complex uh, muscle shapes or anything like that because uh, we only have a capsule to work with. We can really, uh, we, we cannot really reshape this onto a more custom shape. But uh, let's see how far we can take this in terms of the deformations for our character. So let's try it out in our rig.